gone quarter to ten, bit of a late start this morning. Always is on day one. Gotta set things up and get organised, get these on the trucks. Just checking some loose bolts and things like that. I found one. Bacon and egg roll, mate. Following a local out here, he's a mate of ours, Mitch, we've known him for quite a few years. He lives down this way and I don't think there's too many tracks out here that he hasn't driven or at least know about. So, last time we are out here, I actually personally said to Mitch, what are the chances we can come back out? Because I can see we've only just scratched the surface out here, there's tracks. I can see them from the lookout, crisscrossing the area and going left, right and centre. So we've actually come back out here to meet up with Mitch. Mitch is going to deliver us out there now. It takes us right up to the top, to a bit of a viewpoint. We'll regather up there and have a think about how we spend the rest of the day. I also know that he's got a cracking campsite for us. I've seen photos of it, never been out there myself. I guess that's the beauty of local knowledge in places like this. Might even sit back with a cold beer. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. Graham's excited. We all are. We've got a real tough trip planned. It extends from the tracks right here in Columbatty State Forest, just outside of Kempsey, up past Taylor's Arm, and then onto the awesome Priors Track and Rover Track in Coffs Harbour. This is going to be great. Alrighty, oddly enough, this is where I finished last time, starting it here today. This is actually a back entrance or a back track, if you will, up to a lookout, the Colin Batty lookout right up the top. And from here, trust me when I say, this track just goes straight up. Time to air straight down. The terrain around Kempsey can be described as straight up and down, with lots of little nasty bits. We're letting the tyres down because we can expect clay ruts, right. rocks and some very steep hills. This sort of stuff is the stuff we live for. Mitch only hit 18 PSI, agree? Sounds good, 18, 20 PSI and we'll go down from there if you have to. Alright, well this is where I leave you. Right, mate. Have a Too good easy. day. Yes, we shall. Mitch is taking off now, but he's given us some coordinates to a great campsite and he's planning on joining us a bit later on. Good on you, mate. Graham's leading the way in Shorty, and let me tell you, that little Nissan of his is in fine form. Why are there so many bloody flies in here, mate? I don't know. Little nuts. I get the pleasure of riding in the Zero Dollar Zook with Four Wheel Drive Action's young gun, Jock. Up the back is our mate Nick, and he's going to be putting the Black Series Alpha through its paces. For camping, it's spacious and functional. For surviving being towed on these tough tracks, well, we're about to find out. All right, just pulled up here at this little creek, and I believe that this trig point track just goes directly uphill from here. So I'm going to creep forward a little bit, take a bit of a look at it, and I think this is where we'll go low range and lock us. It's already tight and overgrown. And all right, this is definitely the little creek we're supposed to be in. Gee whiz, it's a lot wetter out here than I'd anticipated. All right, this is the hard left I've been told about. Just give it a go right now. I may need to take another go at that, I think. Hey, Nick, you're going to have a good time trying to drive this trailer around. This tight pinch is the start of a long climb to the Colin Batty Trig Lookout. I've been here before, but Graham's about to find out what Kempsey's tracks really have to offer, especially if you're driving a short wheelbase four-wheel drive. The technique on big, challenging hills like this is to tackle each part as sections and really try to get your wheel placement just right. That can be easier said than done when you have a front auto locker in such a short wheelbase four wheel drive. Because steering, well, it becomes a real struggle. Probably straddle that, mate. Yeah? Right. I'm going to oh, try, no, right. try hook left here. Alright, now you got this. I want it. Look at that Zuki line. And then I want to come across here, just like that. Yeah. Get up and mate, up you go. There you go. <laughs> what a line, eh? You nearly got it. <laughs> nearly got it. You can't go over because you're in that rut. No, you're in the rut. He had the right idea, just the execution didn't quite work out because it's quite slippery. 
Um, and that starter mode is playing up as well. Just, let's just get it in neutral, mate. We'll, we'll clutch you backwards if I can push a little bit. Just you, you've got about a metre where you can push. There you go. <laughs> that was all me. <laughs> Alright. When clearance becomes an issue, it's a good idea to build the track up with some logs or rocks. Get a load of this log. It looks like it was made just for it. Oh, that's... Take that out of there. That's cheating. And then, it's as easy as that. The Zook's back on high ground. Nice drive, Jock. That's it. see how Nick's going. It's going to be struggling. If he can get that trailer around that corner, yeah. I reckon he's got no dramas here. But it looks like Nick's in a tight spot. Before this trip, Nick had been fishing for the weekend with a mate, but having dropped off that mate and his boat, Nick's still got the boat rack. But the good thing is that they're easy to remove, so we've got him through in no time. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> right out. Would you get a load of the angles on the trailer and the four-wheel drive in this spot? That's why a polyblock coupling is essential out here. A standard hitch? Well, that just wouldn't work. A few metres, you can, you can readjust this trailer. Straight back? Yeah, straight back. Nah, that's going to jackknife. You go hard, right? That's going to jackknife. As soon as he falls off there, he's going to jackknife. Right? Forward, don't come down. Forward. Go forward. Yeah. Forward and right, forward and right. No. Okay, stop, stop there, stop there. Could we unhook the trailer and push it back and get him to readjust the vehicle back down? So Muhammad can't go to the mountain. You, you bring the mountain. You yeah. bring the mountain to Muhammad. I don't like your chances of un undoing this. It really is a tough dilemma to decide what to do because the trailer is on a nasty little angle. He's got to turn a hard right hand turn up a steep hill. Safety is really important, and of course, we don't want to damage the truck or the trailer. In the end, the decision was that Nick was going to drive the GU up the hill instead of recovering it. He was going to give it a go anyway. First, we're going to pack the track full of logs, and Nick was going to give the GU everything it's got. I'm not a betting man, but I'd put my house on it. That he's not going to drive this. I hope he does, it'd be cool, but I uh, just. If he does, that might be a bit of damage. What? I accept that I am wrong. What a plan works. That's good. That... Yeah, we should take those with us. <laughs> well, I just lost my house, apparently. There you go, Nick you go. made that look easy. It's amazing what a little bit of right foot and determination can do. OK, now that's the easy bit of the track done. Time to get to the tough stuff, eh, Graham? I think I better go have a look too. No, you'll be right. I haven't even seen it yet. I know, look, straight up. It's once you're on that, you just can't go anywhere. You, you gotta go I up. enjoy messing with Graham, but I'm not even joking this time. The next challenge, well, it's straight up. The terrain is what you can expect to find on most of the Great Divided Range, especially around Coffs Harbour and Kempsey. It's straight up and down, steep little pinches with big ruts thrown in between. Uh, just trying to pick a line up this little uh, washout bit here. This is the exact scenario that I'm not a huge fan of in Shorty. It's when the rear, one side rear is in a deep hole, and the opposite side front is way up high. But, uh, the line is definite, there's no going left. It is, it is up this right hand side. I'm just concerned, as Shorty sometimes does, start scrabbling sideways, and I drop into here. It's going to be awkward. What we're going to do is quickly set up a bit of recovery gear on this tree here. If it goes pear shape, which I, uh, it could do, at least we've got everything set up. The winch is already sort of half unspooled. We'll be able to connect that. The ground will feel good in about two seconds. So fingers crossed he drives it, just in case. All right, so we cut across this little rod here. Now the camera doesn't do this part of the track justice, but it's really, really steep. Trust me on this one. Graham's in first gear low range and he's basically idling up to the tough bit of this track. Yes! 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 
Well, if I follow that same line, I should be right, but uh, I guess we'll find out. You drove it well. See, I think people make a mistake by trying to hesitate in those, and you just yep. you just kept on the throttle. The throttle was perfect. You yeah. just you just idled up there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't lie. I didn't love it. No, I didn't love it. No, it was a really good drive, man. Proud of you. I just held that left bit and then um, try and idle up that uh, rock set. Yep, love your style, mate. Now comes a little Suzuki. Now, if you think that was tough in a short wheel base patrol, now wait till you see the zero dollar Zook tie this. This is going to be exciting. The trick for Jock right now is to pick a line and really commit. You can't take any second chances with a hill like this. Dances a bit, the old Zook. Come on. I'm not even driving. I have the time of my life right now. All right, let's see this camper trailer come up. All right, let's do it. Cool, mate. I've got confidence. Now it's Nick's turn in the GU with the camper trailer on the back. If he stops on a hill like this, he's going to lose traction, and that's going to be the end of his drive. Now, Nick's GU is an absolute beast of a four-wheel drive, but even it, with 35-inch tyres and a four-inch lift, is no match for a hill like this, especially when he's got a trailer on the back. Thought he had that, Dennis. So he did the sensible thing in this scenario and got the winch out. We needed to winch the vehicle and the trailer up over All this good. rut. If anything does go wrong, that's just going to dampen things down a little. Now there was no point putting extra stress on the vehicle or trailer where a simple winch would get it to the top with ease. They're just animals. Good drive, Jocko. Thanks, mate. All good drives, really. Yeah. We're closing in on the Trig lookout now, but we still have another steep climb to go. Graham's straight into it and we're about to follow. When they say there's ruts up here, they really mean it. Oh, this looks fun. Looking for this. Looks like some pretty big ruts up there, mate. The Zook's on a weird angle back there. I don't know what it's doing. The Zook was struggling and suddenly we've got problems. That's up. Boys, right back there. I thought you stopped. I thought I thought you stopped. Yeah, right. Oh, spat that straight out. Same Jeez. Thing. The second one in like two days. But, but we've got a vice and we have a spare uni. Okay. Let's do that. We'll winch up to that tree there. We'll just hook you up to that tree. You happy to do it on this angle? Yeah, it won't be hard. Shouldn't be hard. No. Now the big problem of course is Azuka's has got no drive and it's on a steep, steep hill. So the first thing to do in this situation is to get the winch out and secure it to a tree. Now the problem seems pretty obvious. We've got a tail shaft and a broken uni joint laying on the track. Alright, stick that back in the car. What we're doing here is just winching the Zook up the hill. It could easily drive up here, but unfortunately, we found out it's got no front wheel drive as well. So we fixed the tail shaft, it's still got no front wheel drive, so we're gonna get it some flat area, jack the front up and see what the problem is. No front drive and noises from the diff. We think it spat some teeth and it's That's absolutely teeth. stuffed. So what are the options? You know the front diff's absolutely cactus. Yeah, she's stuck, gone. Stuck on the side of a massive hill. I reckon I'll tie you, you up in shorty. Yeah, we'll give it a go. It gets pretty gnarly towards does, the top. There's does. some big rock steps up there, yeah, but it does. Well, look, I'll, just slow and steady. Yep, yeah, we'll be on the radio. All right. All right, let's do that. Where do you think this is going to go, mate? Mate, I think uh, I think we should be all right. As long as um, Graham doesn't get too hung up, we should be sweet. Even though we do have drive to the rear wheels, we're going to tow the Zook just to get up this last bit of the hill climb. We don't want to put too much strain on the rear and risk another uni. Yeah, copy. We'll try and um, let you do most of the talking, mate. I'm driving the wing. Yes. Come on, girl. Wrap it. Watching me throttle control. Right on Sean to see what he's done. Tell me what he sees. Hold on. <laughs> so it's important that Graham keeps on the throttle, and we keep on the wheel of the Zook to try and keep it in a straight line. 
Everything's going good back here, mate. You're doing a good job. Are we going around that corner all good? Yeah, we're sort of trying to go a bit of a wide berth, but no, nah, yeah, we're right. Once we reach the top, not only is there an amazing view, but more importantly, I've got phone signal. And I'm ringing in a favour to help find some spare parts. Turns out that Mitch knows a bloke who is a Zook fanatic. We don't hang around for long and make our way down another track and into town. All right. I've just moved a bottle of water in the back to make room for a diff centre for a Zook because I reckon it'd be about that big. We're going to pick it up from here. At least I think this is the location, so we'll go in, see how we go. Meet Dale. He's the man when it comes to Zooks, and it just so happens that he's got a few spare parts laying around. Check this weapon out. His passion for Zooks really shows, and his one looks, well, just a slightly bit tidier than ours. Dale was quick to get the tools out and help us get that diff centre out so we could get back on the tracks. All right, we're nearly there. Just taking that last axle and CV out. We're going to lift the diff up, I'm going to drop the centre, catch the oil. And hopefully take your centre back to camp, fit it to our Zook. Yep. We'll have full-wheel drive again. No locker, no, we'll have full-wheel drive. Without Dale, we probably would have had to ditch the Zook for this trip, as there are no other available parts in town. And he's really come through for us. What a legend. Pretty soon, and it's time to head to our camp for the night. We all head west out towards a spectacular campsite on the banks of the Maclay River. What a great spot. Jock, I... I'd like to change that diff centre too, mate, and, so I. and help with that trailer yeah. and all the rest of it. I think it's just good for experience to get the young blokes to go out, things like that. Yeah, and we actually want the diff centre to work, so I might <laughs> leave you guys to do it. <laughs> you've actually got a good point. On quick. Yeah. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I love my fishing, and the Maclay River, well, it's home to a lot of really big bass. Graham's in prime position setting up the rooftop tent, and Nick gets to work setting up the Alpha camper trailer. And wow, that's a big tent. It's probably enough room to sleep all of us. Chicken was flashing, was no vehicle. You going, Jock? Yeah, I'm going. You I'm, going? Defi I'm definitely going. We've got this going, mate. How about I give you a hand? Yeah, mate? sounds okay. like a plan. I don't have too much more to do. Do you yeah. need my help? No, we'll be right, mate. Come on, yeah. Jock. <laughs> Take a torch. You just keep doing that. All right. Mm -hmm. I think everyone, it's important everyone has a job. <laughs> All right, I I'll do this bit. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Hunters and gatherers, mate. Hunters <laughs> and gatherers. I'm the hunter. You guys go and fix what you broke. We work late and as fast as we could until dinner was ready. But we'll leave the reassemble until the morning. It's time for a beer. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tour Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Four Wheel Drive Supercentre, you get more for less. What a magic little place to wake up to, right on the Maclay River. I could have flicked a lure around here all day, but instead we had to fix the zook. This is the glamorous side of camping. Last night's chicken meal is this morning's washing up. Oh yeah. Nobody said it was pleasant. We've all got jobs to do this morning. Graham's on the dirty dishes. Nick's tidying up the camp and collecting any rubbish. And Jock and I are on the tools, trying to get the Zook ready to hit the tracks. Yeah, to the last touches on the Suzuki. We're gonna have it back on the tracks pretty soon, I think. Everyone's jumping in here. We've got Wed's photographer. Jock's obviously, he's been working half the night on it, but it's all happening. I'll grab that rattle gun too. Have you got a um, screwdriver? It looks like scrambled eggs is on the menu, but with a little twist. Just add a bit of bacon and tomato. Nice one, Graham. It's just what we need to get set up for another full day on the tracks. There we go. All done and dusted. New dish centre is in. Just got to fix that hub. We're um, back on the tracks. 
Breakfast is ready, lads, when you when you're up. Get into it. Right in there. Want some chili? I got some salt and pepper chili there. Oh, that was a bit. I was Any salt and peppers on it? Yeah. <coughs> Double checking the old VMS here. You see the plan for today, I'm actually quite excited about today because we're gonna do a few more tracks out and around the Kempsey region this morning, but we're also heading out to a place called the Blowhole. Sounds a bit weird. It's a big swimming hole, locals only. We're gonna be taken out there and showing it. Apparently no one knows how deep it is. I'm not about to try and find out either, but looking forward to a swim out there today. Now, the plan from here, once we've done that, is head out to Taylor's Arms. So tomorrow morning, get on the road nice and early and start trek up towards Coffs. We're gonna finish up up there with a few more tracks, but right now, this little spot here right on the river, I'm just gonna put in as a waypoint because it's an absolute cracker. How good is this, eh? Look, I don't know about you folks back home. I've got a rough idea though. Getting out into these quiet country roads like this, in between the tough stuff, don't get me wrong, I love the tough stuff like anyone else does, but it's these quiet country roads out here that really get me to thinking. Down here on my right hand side, I've got a creek line, big deep creek, it's gotta be full of bass, has to be full of bass, and I'm daydreaming about that. Over here on my left hand side, we've got farm farmland everywhere here, but on the edge of that, natural scrubland. Imagine how many deer are up in there. It's sections like this, in between the challenges that I lose myself. I just, I, I probably drive way too slow. In fact, I'm pretty sure the guys behind me are sick and tired of just going so slow, but that's because I'm just absorbing all this, taking it all in. This is the stuff I love. Look at that out there, absolutely picture perfect, untouched. And as we get further away, we're gonna get right back into that bush area again. Get out in the bush, folks. Suck the guts out of this. You only get one shot. It's time to lock the hubs in again because we're about to hit the track that takes us to a hole in the earth called the blowhole. It's there that we'll get a chance to have a swim. This whole area has creeks running through it and I'm told that flooding in this area can get pretty bad and heavy rain. It looks like we're good today though. These creeks are crystal clear, absolutely pristine and really pretty. It's making us all look forward to having a swim. We were warned it was going to be tight and twisty down through here, and it certainly has delivered. This is actually a, a newish, newish track down to the infamous blowhole. There used to be a way better way to get in, but the bridge over the main river got washed away, and so now this track here, which is probably an old 1800s logging track, I'd guess, has actually been reopened by a few of the locals in order to get back down to the blowhole, because you can't get in the other way. A track like this, to me, just screams adventure, because it doesn't get driven. No one's been down here for a very long time. In fact, when Mitch came down, oh, about a month ago, he was the, he reckoned it was just completely overgrown. So we're probably about the fourth car down here in the last month. Got a little drop off here. Really nice little creek. Crystal clear water's coming through here. I reckon a bit of rain, and that would not be an easy crossing at all. As it is, quite slippery. Tight. Oh, got a big branch coming up here. We might just. The cool thing about having a Suzuki on tracks like this is that it's so small. It means that we can pick a line that we call the Zook line and it fits almost where the other vehicles can't. All things considered, Nick is doing okay with the Alpha on the back too. However, I bet he wishes he'd left the boatloaders at his mate's place now. Drops off to the right a bit here, guys. That was a bit of a. I made a bit of a dog's breakfast out of that. That's all right, we got there in the end. Right now, we're dropping down into a creek that leads us right into the blowhole. It's a steep and off cambered section of the track. Now, one of the things about driving a little Suzuki in terrain like this is that it's really, really scary. Short weight space field. Short wheelbase. That's what I'm trying to say. The here. short wheelbase of the vehicle makes it feel like you're about to fall off the side well, of the you're earth. Gonna try and hug this bank, mate. Yeah, I think so. In this situation, having a camper trailer on the back is actually a big advantage. The camper trailer actually keeps the vehicle down and keeps it nice and level and safe. just around the corner, and we've got to drive the creek for around 20 metres before picking up the track again. It's not as tight as the other one. <laughs> so this is a track, we've got to go down through this creek, down across a waterfall, which is a bit of a series of rock steps, and up a really sort of steep pinch, and 
on the other side there should be a swimming hole, so I'm pretty excited about I think. it. It's got to be a little bit of spotting I reckon needed to get through here because there's a lot of rocks, rocks, trailers, yep. all yep. sorts yep. of yep. stuff. I'll be the dummy. Okay. What's well, that steep pinch load? Just, just give it everything. Just, think. just put all the wheels on the ground and go up there? Just go hard. Okay, yeah. let's do that then. Yep. Now the key to driving this sort of terrain is wheel placement. It's all in where you put the wheels. Because if you come down hard on those rocks, where well, you're gonna cause all sorts of damage to your undercarriage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh, that's what oh. Jeez, watch that rock, you just sort of slide off and oh, I got horribly hung up then. Funny, you know, when you walk through this, it doesn't feel that bad. Then you get on it, it's real slippery, and these rock ledges are a bit bigger than you think. Okay, now I'm good to go, off the edge of this waterfall. I don't want to hit my fuel tank if I can help it. Edge my way over it. I'm just the right wheelbase that I've got to go both at the same time. Wouldn't you know it? And I am. Oh, there goes that rear. I didn't really want to hit like that, but I did. That's good fun. Okay, set yourself up for this. A ah, little pinch. Go, Shorty. Yes! <laughs> that is cool. The best Suzuki's in sale, man. Just yeah, that's being, it. Being able to take little tight lines and all that. All right, all right. Now, Jock has decided to take a different line through the rocks. A line that has smaller rock steps, but it's a lot tighter. This is where having a mate out the front to guide where your wheels are can be a big advantage. That's it, full lock. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. If you've got the front auto locker, it's really hard to turn to those little, little bits like that. So just to unlock those hubs allows you to turn really easy, lock them back on. Up you go. Now this is not the kind of terrain that you'd take your typical family camper trailer on, but Nick is in the business of R&D testing for Black Series camper trailers, and it's R&D testing that he's about to get. Only gonna just slightly clip. Oh, it might even miss. Now the automatic gearbox in the GU Patrol is the key to driving rock steps like this really, really slowly, and I reckon that is the absolute key to not doing any damage to the trailer. Watch that trailer. Nick's made it through the creek with the camper on the back, but the exit has caught him out in a chicane of trees. Yep, come back on that and just keep an eye on that big tree, all right? We're going to try and slowly manoeuvre him into a better position. That's right, you got your tyres to the right at the moment, mate. Go left on your tyres. Yep, 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 yep. Ah. Ah. Well, that's just not going to work. We're going to need another plan. After a bit of an assessment and throwing some ideas around, we think we've found a solution. We're going to use Nick's own winch to pull the trailer sideways to try and clear that tree. Because I've, I've winched the rear of my vehicle to pull the um, fridge yeah. side forward. You could do it. Pull his own trailer around. Yeah. Bring the angles okay. Well, we could we could take it from there, from yeah. there, and then you might need to put a um, tree trunk protector just to yeah. make that distance. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. All right, we'll try this out. We want to run a winch off the vehicle back a poly block to pull this trailer across sideways. We just need to pull it over a couple of inches and then you can have a clear run at this hill. Yeah, pull that mate. Yeah, we're good. All right, we've got the rope now onto the tree, onto another tree. There's two pulley blocks in the system. It's going straight from the trailer. We're going to hook it onto the trailer. All right mate, what you want to do is just take up that um, pressure on the winch getting off the right. Another little tip as well, if you run out of recovery blankets, now we're using a few here because there's a few different lines, just going to use the Hercules recovery bag, chuck it onto the rope, 
Yeah, it just any sort of weight can dampen the load on a winch rope. All right, I reckon we're all rigged. Let's get out of here. Yep, get out of the dead zone, people. Safety really is the key in a situation like this. There's a lot of hardware involved and we really need to make sure that everyone's well out of the way of the winch line. That is beautiful thing. Our plan is working. The trailer is sliding across nicely. <laughs> Look at that! However, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it looks like we're going to need to swap trees for this pull. Oh, that tree, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing. There she goes. We could go off that thing there. And... We've found another tree. It's okay, small, it's but it's strong at the base, so it should hold. All right, out of the dead zone. This time, Graham and Jock are oh, going to put some muscle oh, in to help things out, while I keep an eye on things. Oh, I love those big movers like that. <coughs> there we go. Yep. yep. Look at that, it's gone from there. That's a solid. That's a metre and a bit, that is. That's really cool. Nick should be able to clear the tree and tackle the slope now with a little bit more adjustment. You can go for a hard right bird up here to try and clear this tree. Go for it, Nick. That's it, mate. Good teamwork, fellas. See, the trouble with me is that the boat load is roughly the same height as me. So I've got clearance issues. <laughs> Not much further down the track and we've finally reached the blowhole. It's just how Mitch described it. A huge hole in the earth with a beautiful flying waterfall leading into it. What a magical little spot. We've been driving dusty little trails out the back of nowhere. So we've finally arrived here. Absolutely worthwhile. Freezing cold water, absolutely pristine. Not another soul for miles at the place to ourselves. <laughs> now there's only one way in and that's to jump. It's a good seven metre plunge. So it's definitely not for the faint hearted. I don't recommend anyone try this unless you're absolutely sure that you know where you're jumping is deep enough. I've got to say that this was awesome fun, but the hardest part was actually climbing back out. We had to climb back up the waterfall. I don't think I'll be jumping twice. Maybe I'll join Graham in the shallow pool until it's time to go. On our way back to camp, we're gonna drop in at the Taylor's Arm Hotel or the pub with no beer. This is one iconic country pub that you just have to visit. This pub does in fact have beer. It's got the name from when a huge flood came through the area and landlocked the pub and the locals. And of course, with no supplies coming in, the pub ran clean out of beer. Hence the name, the pub with no beer. We're gonna have one cheeky 4X gold while we're here, but we've soon got roped into some of the pub's activities. No. Yep, we're going in on the meat raffle and we've been invited to have a go at a challenge they hold here every Australia Day. Glory short, it's a team of two. Yep. yep. Um, one person throws the egg and the other catches. Throw the egg from this side of the pub yep. straight over the roof. Yep. And the person the idea has got to catch it and best the three eggs. So you get the on each. I reckon I can. Yeah, you want the trigger? The trigger. Yeah. If we win tonight, you've got to wash our trucks. Yeah. I got it dirty anyway, so that's fine. I'll jump okay. in on that. Happy with that? Yep. Um, yeah. Okay, so what we do, yep. give the thrower the egg. How come they're wet? That's going to oh, just cold, serious mate. consequences. I don't know why I'm catching. This sounds like it's a bad idea, but everyone, the whole pub erupted in laughter when I said I was coming out here to catch. Okay. Is the catcher ready? All right. How come I'm going to go first? Here we go. I want to see you you okay. In you come, mate. Yeah. 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 Whoa! Now the general far, gist mate. behind this activity is that you split into teams of two and somebody has to launch the egg right across the pub while the other bloke, well he's got to try and catch it. I got some of it. I, I caught some of it. Oh, sure! <laughs> Catches like he drives. Good throw, good throw. Oh. <laughs> I reckon, I reckon we won that by virtue of the fact that we did our end of the bargain. Yeah, we did. So we swapped teams. Exactly. Oh, we're, we're, on, we're on the same team. Done. Done. Yeah. I like. I want to see. 
Tonight on the menu we've got burgers. They're not just any burgers, mate. Full drive action style. Yep. They're not any old burgers. These are beer can burgers. Now, hang on, mate. What's going on in here, mate? I've got issues. There we go. Do you want a beer? Yeah, just nice and cold. Yeah, you get that. That's actually a really important, fundamental ingredient for beer can burgers. Yep. Actually, while you're up there, mate. Yeah, let's get everything out, eh? Just it down here. doesn't say it affects 50 men treating you anyway. I'll tell you what, I'll show you how it's been treating me. It's nice and clean, mate. I hasn't done as many miles as my one. Settle down. I treat my stuff a bit better than you. <laughs> what do you need here? Right, well, I need, I need mints and I need beef mints and I'm going to use pork mints. We're going to need cheese. We're going to need all sorts of little ingredients hey, because... Hey, got you some... Oof, what do you got here? Yep. We've got bacon and yep. chorizo. You can't go wrong. Look, it's going to be a real meat fest, these burgers. Look, I've got some veggies as well. I've got um, pineapple slices. So I've got pork mints, I've got beef mints. There you go. A couple of onions. Well, oof, it's all going to get mixed together. Oh, look at you. Look I'll at tell this. you what... I don't. <laughs> look, I reckon you guys are wondering, look, beer can burgers and you don't see any bread on the table. Now, there's a good reason for that and you just got to bear with us. Yep. It's all going to make sense in a second. There's some pepper, mate. There's blood. Would you like a bit of salt in there now? If we could. Yep. That's alright. Alright. Do you know what you can do for us? What's that? Can you crack an egg in here? Maybe yeah. two. Chili flakes. That's just just sprinkle right. that in there, general. Yeah, a little bit in there, of course. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot. There you go. Generous serving. Did I pop a paper in there? No, you, have, no you haven't. No. There you go. Oof. But it's smoked. It's, this is... That's gonna make it taste great. Yeah, great. What we wanna do is literally make a ball. We wanna make a ball. Make yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Straight. Bang. Now, watch this. I, I'm obviously been ousted over here. Oh, you didn't, you, the one you're drinking out of? No, it's okay. Hi, Jenny, it's not chicken. One. You know what's bringing to mind for me right now? What's that? Patrick Swayze and Ghost. <laughs> is that what you're enjoying? <laughs> is that what you're trying to get at that, are you? I'm not too, I think you've just gotta, You've really just got to get, like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Is that like that? <laughs> just, just, can I get? No. Nah. <laughs> all right. Now. <clears throat> you all right? Yeah. yeah. It's the onions, eh? Those onions are killing me. <laughs> and the pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> Guess your eyes. It does. So, so what we want to do here is just obviously fill this up. I'm going to go bacon. Yeah. Bacon first. It's a sharp little knife. Chorizo. Look at you with your oh, with meat parcel. Chorizo. Yeah, and then cheese. And then Pineapple on top. That's great. Put that on yeah, top of it. there. That's it. That's it. You know what? You know what I think. Pack that down a little bit. Don't I reckon you that. just got to put a little bit of paprika on top, just for the colouring when the cheese. Well, this is, you'd get this sort of stuff at a fancy restaurant, wouldn't you? You really would. Okay. Five star. Now that is done. Excuse me. <laughs> Slot burning <been> China. <laughs> I've got a I've got a slightly greased camp oven here. Yep, you do. I washed that this morning. I know that for a fact. All right, I'm going to put this straight in. Not on that plastic plate. No, you know? no, no, no. I was going to slide her out. There we go. Yep. All right. Now, as you can see, we've got one. Yep. We're going to fill these up yep. with um, beer can burgers. Yep. We're going to put this on the coals for probably about an hour. Oh, oh. That's perfect, mate. That is perfect. Look at that. That's what you call a beer can burger. Yeah, that's for Jock. Sensational. That's one heck of a meal. Tell you what, love meat burgers. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? Kings has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat Kings solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. We're up at the crack of dawn this morning because we're planning on hitting some tracks in Coffs Harbour today. Nick's already got the alpha packed away yeah, and I'm going to set to work on my swag. Sort of leave these dry and stuff before I put it away, but I'll be putting it up again tonight so it doesn't really matter. I see a lot of people struggle when they try and get their swag into the swag bag. I always try and set it up before I start anything. So I've got the swag bag right at the end of the swag. I'm gonna start rolling up. By the time I've rolled up, it's ready to go straight in. Shouldn't be too much of a struggle. 
I'm just going to roll my swag up with something still in here, I think. It's not really packing down. Sleeping bag's all piled up at one end. Really want to spread that sort of stuff out. Or you're going to ball up in one end. It's going to be really difficult to You know, sometimes up. things can be a bit of a struggle in the morning, if you know what I mean. Not everything always goes to plan when camping. Is that... Just walk away, Sean, and come back for another go later. Good idea, Nick. We'll certainly be using that later to cook up the meat we won in the raffle. Time to hit the tracks in Coffs. Just heading up Gunflat Road out the back of England Highway, southern end of Coffs Harbour. Heading up to a couple of tracks up here that I've known about for a long time, been keen to do. One of them is Pryor's track. Really keen to get stuck into that. And then after that, well, there's about three others out here that we know of, but we don't know the condition of them. So we'll just see how we go, maybe poke our noses up one or two and have a look. But for now, it's been a fair while since I've driven shorty on anything really hard, and I'm dead keen to get out here today and just have a lot of fun. Straight ahead is the main track according to the VMS. Now, there's an old bridge across it, looks a bit, <laughs> looks a bit dodgy to me. I'm gonna jump out, just gonna take a closer look at it before I drive over it, because shorty ain't no lightweight, and that bridge looks like it's past its use by date. If that bridge was milk, you'd throw it out. This is the only section I'm concerned about, this bit here. All of this is pretty structurally sound. These are great big bits of wood. Now, <laughs> I only weigh, oh, I don't know, I weigh about 95 kilos, joking. And I'm even a little bit skeptical about putting my weight on these logs. I'm going across. The Zook hasn't got a problem. Shorty's no heavy, no lightweight though. And then there's Nick in the camper, but I think he'll be fine too. We won't hang around on it though. Now, gentlemen, I wouldn't advise we dilly-dally on this bridge. She's okay, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hang around on it. It's a good thing having someone like Graham up in front. He's got a good eye for off-road obstacles and the hazards that lie up in front. And he's also got the knowledge on how to tackle them. Don't go down there, mate. I'll swallow the zoop. Yeah, I think so. What's the deal with this bridge? I think this, um, probably just go straight up the guts of it. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't come don't too far this way. Don't come too far this way, either. You put two zooks on this bridge. We've got all sorts of four-wheel drives on this trip. Everything from the lightweight little Suzuki right through to the GU up the back. Jump out of that. Nope. Now, I've decided to drive today, so Jock's handing me over the keys, but something tells me he might just regret that decision a bit later on. Nope. I've got myself into a really awkward position, and I've got to reverse to make it easier on myself. But the problem with me reversing is that Nick has to also reverse back onto that bridge. The first thing I realised was just how hard it is to steer the little zoo with the auto locker up front. That's got it. I'm really making this look like hard work. Steer this thing. <laughs> We're out. It's, it's not easy to steer, I, is it? Oh, this, now I'm going to be off the track this way. This is ending in tears, Jock. This is not big enough. Ah, uh, yes. Right hand down. Yep, got it. That's it. Yes. One of the good things about a place like Coffs Harbour is that it has a very active four-wheel drive community. Without a group maintaining this bridge, it would no doubt be gone long ago. It's getting a light sprinkling of rain down here in Coffs Harbour. A little bit of rain can mean a big difference. So I'm just going to knock another couple of PSI of pressure out of my tyre. You know, speaking of tyre pressures, it's one of the biggest causes of tyre damage that you can possibly get. An underinflated tyre will cause wear to the outer edges of the tread while reducing your fuel economy. An overinflated tyre will cause the tyre to excessively wear in the centre of the tread and will give you a much harsher ride. So make sure you get your pressures right to match the terrain that you're driving. It could save you a bucket load of money. Right now though, I'm more interested in traction. So I'm going to knock a couple of PSI out and get back on the tracks. That's a good call because it looks like we're just about to hit our next challenge. Hey Sean, hey, got a copy? Yeah mate. Those windows go up on the zoo, I'm just wondering, mate. Funny you just say that, because I just asked Joe if I tried to do it, and um, no, it doesn't go up, so um, hang on, I'll let's see you do it. You don't like the smell of mud much, do you, mate? Alright, let's get into this. Go. 
With 33-inch tyres and twin lockers on Little Shorty, Graham jumps on the loud pedal and gives it everything it's got. Ah, that's a committing drive. Get into that one, boys. Take it, that was a bit smelly, Graham. Ah, oh, it's ranting. Now the real secret to driving the Suzuki through terrain like this is to jump on the right pedal and don't be afraid of it. Alright mate, in we go. And when you start to run out of traction, turn that steering wheel from left to right in little movements and that just might be your key to getting through. Yeah! <laughs> it's in my mouth. That looks pretty good from back here. <laughs> That was, that's, it's, 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 it's in my mouth. <laughs> Have a little smelly, smelly, smelly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now Nick's got the advantage of 35 inch tyres, a big lift and a lot more power. So he should make this look easy. I'll tell you what, after all the tracks we've driven so far on this trip, this is one tough camper trailer. <laughs> My stitching didn't work. That's no good. It's gone again. Oh, it's gone even worse. <laughs> Please, Please. Please wear some undies, bud. <laughs> I need a censored bar. So far, so good. It's really overgrown through here. I don't know if this track gets used a whole heap. Because even though it's the middle of summer right now, none of these holes lose their water any time of the year. There's always mud down here. So if you're a bit of a mud pig, well, this is one of those tracks for you at any time of year. It looks like Shorty is just about to meet its match. Yeah, you're right there, mate. Are you, you going to drive that or what? Sean, there's two lines you can take through here, mate. I've I've decided to take the uh, I've decided to take the line that pretty much challenges you blokes to set up a winch recovery because I just don't think you've done enough of it. <laughs> no, I'm used to pulling shorty out, mate. Now, one of the things you soon get to learn about Coffs Harbour is that all the locals run around with 35-inch tyres as an absolute minimum. It's a bit of a problem when you've only got 33-inch tyres and a two-inch lift. Well, if you ask me, it sounds like an excuse, Graham, mate. You're well and truly stuck. Now let's see what the Zerk's got. Let's see if he can get further than Shorty. Something tells me with a bit of right pedal, it just might. Oh, yes! <laughs> I'm impressed. <coughs> that stinks, man. It didn't quite make it, but I tell you what, it did get further than Shorty. It looks like we're going to have to winch the last few centimetres to make it over this rut. I love these little winch controllers. When they first came out, I thought they were a bit of a gimmick, but they're not. They work extremely well. It means that I can run the entire winch without having to worry about that cable running out. It doesn't take much to move the Zook. Now, to be honest, I don't like Nick's chances here. With the weight of the GU plus the trailer, I really don't think he's going to get through. But he gives it absolutely everything, and he's made it. What a drive, mate. Once we've made it through that tough, muddy section on the prize track, it was time for lunch. We got lucky in the raffle at the pub yesterday, and that won the meat tray. Out comes the kitchen on the camper, and we'll have a feed in no time. Nick tells us that the stove on the Alpha is an added option. I think if you can stretch your budget out a bit, then it's a must-have. You just literally take two seconds out of your day and just pop it off on the side of the road. Yeah, that's right. A young family even, good kids, they can pull up, side of the road, pop out, make lunch. Couple of How cool drops. is this? Just to be able to cook up some rissoles and snags on the side of a track. Really, I've never really been a king at wrapping things. That'll do, that's close enough. There we go. I reckon we get this in us. If I can get it in the wrap first, get this in us and hit. Literally, the track is right there. Starts right there, goes all the way up around and to the top of a trig point. I'm just hoping it's rain clear so we get something of a view. There's blue sky over there, a lot of, oh, I don't know, it's Coffs Arbor, good snow, who knows what's gonna happen. Oh, I'm going in, mate. Look at that, I'll put some greens on, it'll be healthy. This afternoon, we're gonna be pushing our way along the Rover Trail. Now this track has some pretty steep sections in it. It's all uphill and all downhill. We're gonna be tackling both on this one. Yep, that's my line. If you guys can remember back a few DVDs ago, I certainly have my fair share of history with steep little hills in Coffs Harbour. Yep, the worst case scenario happened. I laid the 30 on its side on a hill that wouldn't be more than a few hundred metres from here. Because this hill is so steep and there's not a lot of traction around, Nick's going to have to absolutely floor it if he wants to make it up without the winch. Oh, that was a big hit. 
But I tell you what, it's lucky the Alpha camper trailer has steel rims. Oh, as you can see, I've done quite a bit of damage to the steel rim here. It's taken a big, fairly big hit, but given it's a steel ring and a trusty hammer, pretty much hammer that back in and it should be right. Steel rims really are a winner out here. So long as you have a big hammer with you. Yeah, look, it's the final blows that sometimes make yep, the difference, make the mate. Difference, yeah. Yep. We're going to get the thumper out now, fill it full of air, and we'll be on our way. We're trying to get to a lookout, but first we've got to crest over a couple of hills in order to get there. Something tells me that this hill is about to drop away and it's going to get very steep. One of the things about going down really steep hills is they can actually be more scary than going up. Yep, that's just straight on down, that is. But a little tip that I've found is to put the vehicle into first gear low range and let the engine brake in do all the work. And if you can, try and avoid using the brake pedal. I saw both the shorty. Oh, sugar. That's a bit of a. Did you see that? We just got a cheeky little wheel lift then. Speaking of brakes though, it really is a good thing that Nick does have trailer brakes in that Alpha camper trailer. I'll tell you what, he's really put them to good use here. That feels rather awkward. That feels equally as awkward. Drakey, you still with it, Drake? Yeah, mate. You'll enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to lift a wheel, mate. It's, um, it's going to be a big one. That's all right. Good, it's good. This is what soup driving's all about. Big wheel lifts and um, pucker moments. <laughs> Here we go. Now one of the problems with going down really steep hills and letting the vehicle do all the work in first gear low range is that you can sometimes stall. But the problem is with the Zook that the starter motor's also stuffed. Clutch it. It's this moment right now that I'm starting to have flashbacks to when I was last in Coffs Harbour with a dirty 30 on the commando trail. starting to drop. Now, let's hope it doesn't happen again. Yep, that was heavy. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was close. I'll tell you one thing though, Coffs Harbour tracks definitely have it in for me. Now, Nick, having seen us try and drive down there with wheels in the air about four foot high, I reckon he's going to take a different line to us. He's going to let the GU's articulation and the big 35 inch tyres flex its way down the hill. It's going to be a breeze for him. Yep, you can really see that trailer braking coming into its own again. And have a look at his face. There doesn't seem to be a single thing that phases Nick off-road. Okay, the top of the next hill is our goal. We're nearly there. Okay, here we go. Final little push up to a really cool little lookout, unofficial lookout. It's one of those lookouts that you wouldn't see in the books. I'm really hoping it's still available to us because I'd love to show the boys. Just got to get up here first. Hey, I think we might be very close to the top here. And that is fantastic news. Well, there you go. We're nearly up to the lookout on top of the Rover Trail. And let me tell you, this trip has been so exciting for so many reasons. And I think, number one, is because we're in the hot seat of the Suzuki again. That thing is so much fun to drive. But driving tough tracks with good mates, well, I reckon it's about as good as it gets. Keen for a look at. Something you really got to love about Coffs is when you get up high, the views. Mm -hmm. I reckon there's anything like it anywhere else. Yeah, it's great it's dividing awesome. range. Right beside the coast. Yeah, too. right on the guts of the coast. Yeah, magic spot. So there you go, Kempsey to Coffs. I reckon we've done it almost all the way, almost all the way, <laughs> off road. We busted the Zook. Well, we played mechanics a few times yeah. and we nearly pulled the whole Zook apart and put it back together again. It's great we can do with a Meccano kit. You've, you've also almost put the Zook on its roof a couple of times. But that's, <laughs> oh, that was nothing. It's, yeah. all, it's all part and parcel of driving Someone a Zook. Well, 
You know what though, we got to talk to a few locals on the way through here, in pubs and various places, mainly pubs. Uh, and what I found to be amazing, we went out to places like the Blowholes. Yeah. There were tracks out there that went, there was a, one of the locals we met, Lockie, was saying he could take us for four days yep. out that way, showing us waterfalls, other, other things like the Blowholes. Nobody would see. And the thing that really gets me about these places is you can travel to places like Cape York and the Kimberley and Arnhem Land, all these great locations, but just out the back of Kempsey, yep. you've got amazing waterfalls, you've got insane tracks. I mean, that's pretty cool. Got it all. You know what else costa has got? A pub or two. I was going to say the big banana, <laughs> but, but a pub sounds good too. What do you reckon we get down from here? We've still got a big steep downhill climb to get out of here. Yep. And uh, it's your shout. Yep. I bet Jock will be fighting for the keys, but he probably wasn't right with you now, mate. Right, let's do it, Nick. Lead on, mate. Let's go. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan storage drawers. Our entire range of Titan storage drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan double drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each drawer top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long, and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros, and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide, and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide, and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four-wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. 
This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test. So they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking, and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia, and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top, and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire, or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. 
The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the premium camp oven stove as required. Inside you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.